How often do you think about happiness? Have you ever thought about, are there happiness experts? Well, guess what? I found one and I cannot wait for you to hear her tips and what she has to offer. And it is good. And make sure you listen because we have a special offer. Welcome. And I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Empowering Time Markers, the podcast where we share inspiring stories, empower listeners with business tips, and create connections. I'm your host, Tia Bottom, and I'm thrilled to have you join us on this journey of growth and empowerment. Our guest today is a happiness expert and a YouTuber on happiness with Perrette. She studies multiple modalities such as mindfulness, movement, subliminal conversations, and neuro-linguistic programming. One day, she realized she was naturally born happy, and she wondered why figure out how and studying ways to help others find happiness. Please welcome Perrette. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hi. So good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Please tell me your story. Yeah. Thank you for having me in your show. I'm really excited. My name is Perrette, and I'm a happiness expert. So a lot of people, they always ask, what is a happiness expert? So expert is... But every other expert is, I know a lot about certain topics. So I know a lot about happiness, a lot. Like you say, you already introduced me. I was born happy the way I see it. I always remember myself being happy, but I always figured out why other people are not feeling the same way. What is different about me or what I'm doing different? So I started paying attention on what I am doing different. And I started learning more about it. But I started learning more about it later in life. Before that, I was just living a happy life as a kid and then teenager and adult and everything like this. I still have hard things in my life, like everybody else does. I've gone through a lot of really hard moments in my life, but I always go back to a happy state of mind and have my happy state of mind helps me go through those situations much easier. So for me, it's easy to go through hard situations because I'm looking forward for positive outcome. Always looking like, how can I go through this and find something good on the other side and go through this faster? But let's go a little bit more about my story. I was actually born in Estonia. But I've been living in the United States and Florida for the last 19 years. And that was the way I came here was also part of just traveling. And I just find the Florida to be a place to stay somehow. Can I pause you for a second? Yeah. So for those that don't know where Estonia is, it's like south across the water from Finland. It's west of Russia and north of Latvia. So it's cold. Right. It's four seasons. Most <laughs> like winters are cold. I need to know more of like, how did you get to Florida? Why Florida? And how did you adjust to the weather temperature? Yeah, the weather. The way I got to Florida when I was younger, I studied hospitality for a little bit to travel because there was programs that if you work in a hotel, you work and travel programs. It usually was hotels. So I studied hospitality to go travel. And after my study, I have option to go for internship. And my option is to go to England or Florida. So that was not really anything to think about what to choose after we had really cold winter. So it was like, do I go to England where it's still cold or do I go to Florida where it's warm? So that's why I ended up in Florida. Okay. And continue with your story. I just wanted to know like how that happened. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I would want to go back to where I think the learning about other people's feelings and learning how to teach happiness to others start. It started when I learned, was reading a book, Emotional Intelligence. That's where I started understanding why I'm feeling one way and other people are feeling different than I do. And I was able to 
go through myself, notice myself, acknowledge my feelings, and I was able to observe other people's feelings. So I think, and I was only like 16, 15 when I read it. So it was really easy for me to start from there to pay attention to everything else. And I was already living in America. I got myself life coach certificate start from there and after working as just a life coach for a little bit i started getting more into happiness so i started learning specifically happiness how people teach about happiness there's so many theories about happiness so i focused on learning how to teach happiness because that was something that was natural to me and i was my calling as well i wanted a lot of people to learn how to be naturally and just easily happy so that's my happiness expert story. That's awesome. So I was going to ask you, what was your first certification? And because I know that you have a few, what led you to life coaching? Did you know like you wanted to be an entrepreneur in that? No, I think it was more about not entrepreneur, not the business side, but just helping the people side. Helping people to reach their goals was more of my attention. Okay. Because asking the money side and the business side was that's something that I had to learn. But teaching and helping people was something that came naturally. That was like the passion for that. That's like when you was a photography, that's the way for me was the coaching and teaching people how to be cheerful and happy, joyful. And the business side was something that I had to learn on the side how to do it. And what's the difference between happiness and a positive mindset? Is it the same? Is it different? I take them all. I put them all together. You can't say that there's a little bit different here and there. And some people completely separate them in a different things. I put them all together. They basically still all the same positive feeling, but people teach about more uh, happiness is what people use when they're striving for something. So the most people say they want to be happy or people say everybody wants to be happy. So I'm using that label, happiness mm -hmm. label, because that's most used label for that feeling. Yeah, that well, that's the ultimate goal, right? Is to be happy. People don't be like, well, I want a positive mindset. No, they want to be happy, right? Like it might get you there, the positive mindset, but happiness is the goal. So it's a great name. I love that you're a happiness expert. Mm -hmm. And do you happen to know the book, The Emotional Intelligence? Do you have the author of that book? Daniel yeah. Goldman. That's cool. I, I like doing different ways with different people. I'm learning all kinds of new ways of people doing things. So it's always interesting people do it in a different way. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Estonia. Do you miss it? What is your favorite food there that you miss the most? Oh, what I miss the most is people, for sure. People. I miss the people. My family is still all there. All my friends are still there. So people is the most thing that are missing in the world is doing. Do you get to go back? I think back two times. So it, I'm looking to go back again as soon as possible. Yeah. It must have been hard in the last few years for sure, too. And you have a daughter, right? How old? I have an eight-year-old daughter. Eight yeah. years old. Aw. Do you FaceTime or anything with your family with her? Yes, we do. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Tell me about your book. Okay. My book is Joyful Life Jumpstart. And I actually wrote it turning with lockdown. Yeah, it was in my head already before, I think maybe a year before it started already forming itself in my head. And when the lockdown happened, so I just had this extra time, I started writing it down. It is like a workbook and you fill it up, you go through your past, you go through your current situation and you go to the plans what you want your life to be in the future. Ooh, so is it like a journal, you said workbook type? Yes, workbook. It's not a journal, it's more fill up and do those assignments. Okay, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And it's on Amazon? It's on Amazon, yes. Awesome. And tell me about your program. My program is two hour, I do two hour assessments, which actually it's your jump start or your really good start point to start living a happy life. 
There's three points that we're going through. First, we're going to find out what is your happiness gatekeeper. There's five different things that I'm usually list. And you have to find out what is the thing that holds you back from feeling happy or expressing your happiness. Next step is to find out what makes you feel happy, to understand what happiness is for you and what makes you feel happy. And the third point, we're making, we're setting goals and making a plan. So that goes in two hours. And after that two hours, you can pretty much start. Everything starts pretty free because you just get so much knowledge. And then from there on, if you need to, you will come back occasionally or you can work with me longer one-on-one -on -one as a coaching, happiness coaching. And, but that first assess two hour assessment gets you going. That's amazing. So where do they sign up and how much is it? They can sign up with, through my website. That's one way for sure. That's the best way as well. You can go in a calendar or you can send me an email. And the price right now, the price is 140 for two hours. It might change in the future, depends on things. And I'm planning to make it as a group session as well. And a group session price might be cheaper. And you have a special announcement for our listeners? Yes, for an older listener. So I'm giving away one of the assessments, one of the two-hour assessments. So Tia is going to let you know how, what do you have to do to get the, your prize. Yes, that's awesome. And I'll announce it on the next, whoever wins will be announced on the next episode. But for now, it's, review this and share this episode and I'll have you entered in to win this amazing gift. Hi, this is Future Tia. Please use the hashtag sharehappiness2024 when you share this episode on social media so I can track who is shared and I will reach out to you before the next episode. Thank you so much. So tell me what's in the works for you. I'm working on another book right now, still about happiness more specifically, because the other one was Joyful Life Jumpstart. And this is more about happiness. I'm pointing out some new ways how to understand happiness better and how to maintain it and what it is. Because I want people to get away from this meaning that happiness is something that's 24 seven and we don't feel any other emotions because that's impossible. So the, how do you, if somebody, you have a loss in your family or something like you're not going to go around just jumping around happy. That's you need grief and you need sadness in those moments. And it's just, you have to learn how to process all the other emotions as well, but then how you go back to happiness. Oh, that is so good. I cannot wait. Do you have a name for it? I have a name for it, but I'm not telling the name yet. Okay. <laughs> Even though it's going to air in January, February. Okay. I will have, I'll have all the links below. I'm so excited about that. That's super cool. So I have another question. You have all these modalities when you're working one-on-one -on -one and in group. Tell me what's your favorite. My favorite is actually some liminal questions because that's what I'm best at. I know what questions to ask because people that have a lot of those answers that they're looking from somebody else, they actually have them inside. Somebody just has to ask them. Like unconscious things that they know, but somebody, that's why it's called subliminal, because they're in your unconscious but somebody you have to ask it so you can, the people are amazed when they, that's the, your aha moments when you say something like, oh, I didn't know that about myself. And then it's because nobody asked before. Wow. That's super cool. Is there an example you could give that you would start with? No, it works on one. Okay. Because you have to do the assessment yeah. first and see. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's really goes, cool. It goes by the person because I actually, those questions are really individualistic. Towards the person, I get a feel of the person, and then I start feeling like what, based on okay. what they talk about, I start knowing what questions I have to ask them. Right. right. What to uncover to unlock something. That's really cool. I had never heard of mm -hmm. that before. What's the neuro linguistic programming? Is that part of that? It's very similar as well. That's learning to not to say negative things to yourself. 
Okay. And stay the positive things to yourself. So that's a lot of people teach that, do that and they teach about it as well. It's like when you want to keep some kind of positive talk, you will say different people use different sentences. I use anchor. So if you want to have some positive thought that you want to keep for yourself, you say anchor. So that's the one you keep. And negative thoughts that do come to your mind, you cancel. So yeah. you see something negative comes to your mind right away when you notice that you have a negative thought in your mind, you say cancel. And with a lot of practice or some practice, it starts becoming natural. You might even don't have to say it, just blocks out those negative. Your brain learns to block out negative thoughts. Yeah. I I totally understand that. I've been to therapy a lot <laughs> and it really does work and it does take practice. And it's like you're training yourself on how to think and you're ultimately saving your own self from yourself. Exactly. That's because cool. sometimes those thoughts, they will come in the morning out of nowhere and they like don't mean anything. It's just mm-hmm. not even related. Automatic. Right? Yeah. But they come in the morning and they bother you all day. Mm-hmm. So when I was already practicing for a while, there was one morning it was like so amazing because the thought came in my mind and it was something that would have bothered. I know it would have bothered me all day. I said cancel and it was just gone. It was just like, that was the, I remember it was years ago, but I still remember it because it was just, I'm, I was all oh, in the moments. Did that just happen? It was just completely gone. Didn't bother me. I don't even remember now what the thought was. Yeah. Work amazingly. This will help people that had like anxiety or intrusive thoughts and things like that. So I highly recommend working with Perrette. She is amazing. You definitely know your stuff and you really have an amazing heart. You want to help change the world and help people become happy. And I really think you're doing it. I love it. I was a guest on your YouTube, but it was around anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was a really great episode. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to link that below so people can go check that out. It was the whole series was amazing. Like you do different series. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. The way I like to do it as well, because I had different series of podcasts, like you said, and the one that you were was honestly about anxiety. A lot of people that I work with, no, those are actually the people I don't work with yet. So they're people with anxiety. They don't even think about happiness yet. And that's why I made this honesty about anxiety so they can work through the anxiety before they will move to the happiness. Because they, the anxiety bothers them so much in daily life. Happiness is not in their vocabulary. I realize they have to deal with the anxiety first. I'll give them that in my platform and then they can start watching other shows in the middle as well. I want to mention one other show that I just, that series that I just did as well was really cool to do was Men's Guide to Happiness. So I I did interviews with 20 men and made them to talk about happiness. So that was really interesting to do, to see how men's point of view of happiness and how they talk about it and what it means for them. It was different than for women. They talked about happiness differently than women do. Love that you did that in showcasing men, especially, I don't know what kind of demographic follows you mainly, but I think if there's more of an understanding between the sexes and different people and different points of view, you really see and can understand more people and where they're coming from. So I commend you on doing that. That's amazing. I love that you did that. It's super cool. And do you have a new thing that you're working on, a new series that's coming? New series will be more, I think I want to do more of uh, just monologue uh, as podcast for a little bit. So I want to teach some of the things that I usually wrote things down, like I'm doing writing. And now I want to do that and I put those things that I usually write. I want to put them in a video format. Very cool. I love that. As an entrepreneur, 
Tell me what your top three tips are. Okay. You give me a little bit of time to prepare for that. So thank you so much. I'm going to look down for the viewers. I'm going to look down for this one as well. First one is, is to start with what you have. Definitely start with what you have. Don't think that you need X, Y, Z things. Just whatever you have, that's what you're starting with. If you have just the basic for I give you one example from my thing to start my podcast. I had my basic computer camera and that's where I started with. Now I have real camera and lighting and everything like this. But my first videos were just in a basic computer camera. It was not a good quality, but I did it anyway. So don't think, hold yourself back because of something that you don't have yet. So that was my first one. Second one was... To enjoy what you're doing. That goes with happiness. You have to find ways to enjoy what you're doing. Otherwise, your entrepreneurship comes to a burden. And that's when you burn yourself out and you're not going to you do it because only for money on something. And it's just not going to work. You have to have some kind of passion to it and enjoy actually doing it. So that's the second one. And the third one would be... Don't get stuck on the things that don't work out the way you plan them and do the adjustment as soon as possible. So that means if things don't work, you have a plan in your mind and you think that things are going to work out in that way. But then something happens, even said, say you had a meeting with a client, but it started raining and they have to cancel. Adjust. As, don't start thinking like, oh, everything went bad. And now this is not happening. Don't make those stories. Adjust as soon as possible and adjust for a new positive outcome. So as soon as possible, try to think, okay, raining, can't do the appointment today. Let's call and schedule a new appointment. When we get a new appointment, I'll do something else today. Those are so good. And there's so many nuggets of wisdom in there that I was like, yes, because we've all been there and had to face that. So these are very real things that every entrepreneur has had to come face to face with. So thank you so much for sharing those. Those are great. I have actually, I have a story for that. But that's okay. business related, but my personal story. I love it. You just example how you adjust for the moment. I had plans to go see a movie with my daughter and I bought the tickets online. She was already ready. I was ready. We were ready to go. We went to the car. My car didn't start. So what do I do? I told my daughter I'm going to uh, take her to their movies. We're all excited to go to the movies. My wife was, I told my daughter we're going to the movies. That means we're going to the movies. So I called first, I called my insurance company. So they will come to see why my car is not starting. Then I called to the movie theater that I was supposed to be going. They asked me if we can use the ticket some other day. Then I called and looked up the different movie theater if they're showing that movie. And what time they're showing that movie. They were showing that movie, I think, Two or three hours later in the same day, a guy came and made my car to start, jumped the battery. I went, we went to the other movie theater to see that movie. And next day we went to the first movie theater to see a different movie. So I just like, so I'm already with the practice. I've learned to adjust so fast mm -hmm. in all the situations my, my, in my life. If something doesn't go the way I plan, I just read as soon as possible, make a plan, other plan, and then start doing things right away. Yeah, I love that. And in fact, you got two movies and your daughter got two movies out of it. Yeah, so but even better I than what you did. More fun. Yeah, I yeah. Out more fun just that moment. But that moment when I was in a car, I could have made a decision. Oh, I own my day is now ruined. My car's not starting. Everything is bad. Like, yeah. why did it happen? I could have started thinking all that way. But that's where the happiness, when you learn about happiness more the way I teach it, you start adjusting those moments for a positive outcome. I love it. And I love what you do. That's so cool. We're going to shift gears and we're going to play a game. 
Are you ready? Okay. You picked, finish the statement. There's 10. I feel amazing when... I get to experience new things. Yes. If I could, I would... Travel around the world. I can't believe I actually blinked when I was younger. I like the thing that I did when I was younger. So I don't really have any questions that though. I can't believe that I did so many amazing things, actually. There you go. That's the, you have an answer. I'm always chosen first when it comes to leaving some kind of activity. I'm a little embarrassed by the fact that I know so little about. I would like to know more about online business running. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's changing all the time. It's like you constantly have. To. I know this is weird, but I really like to. I think it's weird, but I really like to still go to travel more. But I was, I, I have one thing that I would say with travel thing is all for some reason, I always want to go to Iceland. Yeah, it's beautiful. I've heard. Too, but I, I don't know why. It's mine. I want to go to Iceland, but I'm asking my sister, why do I want to go to Iceland? What is that? What is that about Iceland that my mind tells me to go to? You'll find out when you get there. I love it when. I love it when my daughter giggles. Oh, that's super cute. If I could teleport people, I would teleport. Oh, my family. Yes. I would, yeah, the, my family to here. Yeah. When I'm alone, I like to... Usually, it's either write or read. I admire people who... Go for their dreams. Thank you so much for playing that game and told me a lot about you and your heart. And you're a really special person. And thank you. Thank you so much for sitting with me and being on my podcast. And when your new book comes out, we'll definitely have to get together again. And I want to hear even more about it. Especially the name. So <laughs> the name is the one that's that's the most important part is actually the name. Awesome. That is quite the teaser and I'm looking forward to it. And I have two final questions for you before I let you go. But first, is there anything you want to share before or that we haven't talked about? I would go want the viewers to really know. And that's why I'm really teaching to understand it. Happiness is not that you're not going to have other feelings. Other feelings have their reasons. Sadness has their reason. Fear has their reason. Anger has their reason. But you want to feel those other feelings only for when you need them and then let them go. You don't want to carry the other negative feelings. You don't want to carry them with you. But positive feelings, you want to carry them with you. Awesome. That's super cool. Okay. So first, this is a two-parter. Tell me what legacy means to you and what role does it play in your life? I think legacy means to making a difference. And if you make a difference, I always tell people, if you make a difference in at least one person's life, you already accomplished it. But usually a lot of everyday people, they help so many people even turning the day. They don't even notice that they help them. Maybe they hold the door for somebody. Maybe they smile for somebody. So those are all the people that you're helping. You acknowledge them. I love that. And how are you marking this time in your life? This time, just by having my memory of it, the way I, we call it, me and my daughter, we call it mental picture. So if there's no camera, that's actually for interesting for you to listen. If we don't have a camera, it's something good to happen. My daughter says, I'm taking a mental picture. That is so cute and really great advice by a young person. I love that. They they always come up with creative ideas. I love it. Again, thank you so much for sharing your message of happiness and showing that you are a true expert in it, in this area. And oh my gosh, I wish you nothing but success, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me in your show. And I wish the same to you. All the good. Thank you. I love what you're doing. Thank you. Same right back at you. You just heard my conversation with Perrette, who is a happiness expert and YouTuber. I am so pleased that I got to have her on my show. And if you were listening, we have a special offer in there. Share this episode. Please rate it as well. And use the hashtag ShareHappiness2024. It will enter you into winning a two-hour call with Perrette truly amazing. It was so good to learn about her moving from Estonia to Florida 
and her understanding of happiness and all of her coaching methods, things that I've never, some personal stories and insights on maintaining happiness. I hope you got as much as I did out of this episode and I'll see you in the next one where I'll announce a winner. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Empowering Time Markers. We hope you found inspiration, gained valuable insights, and connected with our incredible guests. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us continue to bring you empowering content. And remember, the journey doesn't end here. Stay connected with us on social media, where we'll be sharing additional resources, behind the scenes content, and updates on upcoming episodes. Thank you for joining us on this empowering journey. Together, let's continue to make our mark on the world one moment at a time. Until then, keep empowering yourself and others. This is Tia Bottom, signing off from Empowering Time Markers.